hello everyone uh please let us know in the two uh, the the chats if you can hear us or see us or whatever uh if we could uh just waiting to see any kind of confirmation to any of these <laughs> would be nice um you can okay okay youtube's good twitch is good excellent also random start to the stream uh martin murphy happy birthday hope you're having a good one <laughs> yeah happy birthday and apologies for the slight late start today it <laughs> definitely wasn't me because i was playing minecraft and i lost track of the time honest master of suspense <laughs> I am innocent. I am. It's not my fault. Lord Scrock dragged me off to have a pre-show chat. It didn't go well. I am now dead. <laughs> you know, obviously it was my fault because I was having problems with my my lizardman codpiece for my genuine cosplay. Uh, <laughs> obviously, yeah, it was that. <laughs> uh, hope you're all doing well. Uh, welcome to another episode of Who Would Win. The last one was super fun, even though it was <laughs> super just kind of derailed uh, by all sorts of things. Um, but we have a fun one for y'all today because we're going to be doing Lord Skrulk versus... Uh, oh, man, I just realized I'm about to be in trouble. But the good news is so is Andy, so it's okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, before we get into today's matchup, we have to talk about last week's matchup. Uh, which it just occurred to me that I was like, yeah, we're going to pick a favorite comment from all of the comments. And I totally forgot to do that. So um, I didn't do that either because I was playing Minecraft. Um, <laughs> I completely <laughs> lost track of the time. I thought I had another 40 minutes to go. I was going to have a nice little scroll through because I've been reading them earlier in the week. And I was like, <laughs> I'll go back and have a check just before the stream. But th that that was previous Andy, who was clearly a fool. Um, so before I go, I would just like to say that clearly all of you out there have absolutely, well, about 43% of you, um, <laughs> have all the taste in the world, while the remaining 57 clearly don't know what's going on, because for some reason, Thorgrim didn't win that matchup. I mean, what? It's almost like I also kind of agree. And throughout the course of the situation that we had built through the course of the last stream, I was sitting there going, why the hell won't Tyrion win this? I could have come up with something here. So and that's okay. one of the things I love most about these, because um, as I mentioned last stream, um, I have played this out so many times and it, tends to always go the same way in the end but this this was so different and it was really nice to see Tyrion get a chance to shine yeah so okay so i i i'm gonna throw chat a bone on this one um to get us out of trouble which is that um so what we're gonna do to kind of punish ourselves more than punish y'all mm. is that for next week i swear I'm, I'm even gonna write it down on a little thing for me a little <laughs> notepad that me and Andy are going to pick our favorite comments from both the Tyrion and Thorgrim one and the Tannuin and Skrulk one, and we'll read those out and give like full credit and everything. So we'll do both. Excellent. <laughs> that yes, way we're so... not wronging the people out of the uh, <clears throat> um, their comments. So before we uh, dive in and explain exactly what happened, because Sotek won, so Sotek can decide exactly how it pans out, taking Ooh. into account all of the many votes that came in, I would just like to say, you're all going in the bloody book, the Damage Cron! I'm very unimpressed with you all. <laughs> yeah, all of your grandchildren are in so much trouble. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. But... The hunting down of your grandchildren aside, I shall now pass you over to the always marvellous lore master of Sotek to show just how Tyrion managed to outkill the king of all the dwarfs. Yes, so here's here's the way I think that this scenario went down. Because the percentages ultimately were very, very close. Um, it was a small gap. So what I think happens is that with so small of a gap that there has to be consequences for what actually goes down because neither of them is able to pull out just a, a, a great win. No, it's a win with problems. Mm -hmm. So I think what happens is that like we uh, did throughout the uh, decided throughout the stream, there is a diplomatic meeting between the two that takes place in a tavern somewhere in Altdorf. Much, I'm sure, to the chagrin of Carl Franz, who could see this going wrong in a myriad of ways. <laughs> but unfortunately for him, they're both too stubborn to listen to what he has to say. 
Uh, the initial conversation between them with some string drinks starting to flow starts off uh, tense. And unfortunately, it kind of only grows more and more tense as the dwarves are not the easiest to talk to, uh, even with all of the efforts of elven diplomats to use very flowery language, which, if anything, just infuriates the dwarves more because they're not just saying things bluntly and to the point. But then when Tyrion gets involved, Tyrion, at first, the conversation might start to go a little well because Tyrion is a very blunt speaker compared to most elves. But it also means that he's far more easily frustrated by what the dwarves are doing and will say as much, which can go off very poorly. But just as things might heat up in the conversation, a part of the floor unexpectedly caves in as poisonous green gas comes wafting up into the tavern and all hell breaks loose as a... a Decent-sized squad of black-clad uh, uh, black Skaven assassins come jumping out. What is their overall mission? Who can say for sure? Are they here for Thorgrim? Are they here for Tyrion? Are they here just to ruin a potential diplomatic meeting? Wh who can say what is going on in the heads of the, the insane Ratman? But nonetheless, as the fight breaks out, the dwarves and the elves, in the grand scheme of things, aren't really in any true danger despite the full efforts of Clan Eshin. These are two of some of the most powerful individuals in the Warhammer world. They know how to handle themselves against some rats. However, Tyrion already has his blood up. He's already furious after hours of listening to people talk, which is not really his forte. He's furious at having to deal with the dwarves, and in his opinion, their deliberate attempts to sabotage a potential... Uh, uh, alliance at every turn, and the dwarves are also very irritated. But Tyrion, there's something darker about his anger uh, by the time the Skaven show up. And this interruption finally just kind of pushes him over the edge. There's been so much going on back in Ulthuan. Things have already been so tense in his personal life with various schemes and worries that he and he alone has to shoulder. And he finally just loses it. And he massacres the rats. He goes a little too aggressive he even unleashes sunfang which thankfully doesn't burn down the tavern but is clearly an a foolish move and in the aftermath of the battle he has a moment of thinking well i saved the dwarves lives i did all the, i got the most kills clearly they should thank me but when he looks across the room and sees thorgrim grudgebearer the high king of the dwarves glowering at him from his throne what Thorgrim sees is not a heroic warrior who jumped out to save uh, some ambassadorial allies and his own kin. Instead, he sees a petulant, angry child just flailing around without any thoughts for the damage he might cause and being far too aggressive, far too emotional, a typical elf. And looking at this, Thorgrim... Okay, okay. <laughs> Thorgrim realizes more than ever there can be no alliance with elves. There's a reason they betrayed them thousands of years ago. And if this is what the best warrior the elves have to offer, clearly it would only take a small number of incidents for the, another betrayal to happen. He can't trust someone like Tyrion. He's too hot-headed. And with that, while Tyrion did get the most kills and is hailed as a hero by people that witnessed the battle, the elves who are very the elves and the dwarfs who are very politically minded and the spy of Carl Franz uh, who was watching in on the tavern both walk away knowing this did not go well. Love it, nice end, and um, I think it's a fair representation of how it all panned out. Um, for all I was dissing the vote because it didn't go my way, no other reason. Um, <laughs> I I honestly think that this is certainly the correct outcome for this which is they are both exceedingly powerful characters and one of them is out of the two hot-headed the other one is filled with hatred and anger but also knows because he has an extraordinary will how to control himself he's a dwarf the elves by comparison are like the ever eternal teenagers that they are and tend to respond not necessarily in the best way, given the circumstances. And as we see here, poor old Tyrion, for all he may have won this individual tiny battle, he has lost the overall diplomatic war. Yep. Uh, and uh, fun, just random fact, for any of y'all that are curious what Thorgrim is like in these situations, if you go read the book Thorgrim, which is more of a novella, uh, it actually has a really hilarious, well, good and hilarious showcase of what Thorgrim is like. When there's like a full wah coming at him, 
with Gorfang Rocket, Thorgrim just sits there and is like, no, we are not in a hurry. They will come to us because they are the orcs are impatient and they're fools. We have like a stalwart position. We will hold the line. Whereas Belagar is like practically frothing at the mouth, <laughs> wanting to get into the fight. And Thorgrim mm -hmm. keeps like tutting at him and being like, you're so impatient. Like, just wait. There's no reason to do this. Like, and it's 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 a fascinating dynamic of just how oh, wins the race. Wins the race. Thorgrim is. Yeah. Agreed but, completely. All right, let's get caught up on Super Chats and stuff, and then we'll hop into this week's goodies. Oh, I'm looking forward to this week. It's going to be a fun one. Yes, it is. Uh, okay, so... So we've got... Uh, <laughs> I like your your uh, image there of uh, Soul Eater mixed with, like... Oh, my God, looks like Carl. Anyway, hi, guys. Just wanted to let you know how much... Uh, that I wouldn't like Warhammer quite as much as I do without your streams. Also, Andy, you've inspired me uh, in my own writing for my D and D campaigns. Delighted to hear that, and I do hope that you move from D and D over to Warhammer at some point, or indeed any other game that I've been involved with. Because <laughs> hey, <laughs> um, Andy, can you confirm that Skrulk was recently seen having a pump with Gelt in a back alley? <laughs> I I sadly cannot confirm that one way or the other, but if it's true. Of course, Gelt would. Of course, Gelt would. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this again for Andy. Uh, Juani Axtaxa, Zeka Zeka Zeka, Sili Sotek, Gakgar, Shakota, Chili Kankani Ka, which. Chili uh, Ka. For anyone that doesn't recognize that, that is one of the. That's the chorus from the uh, Tedo Echo versus Lord Scroke rap battle on YouTube. <laughs> Epic Rob Battles of Warhammer! Which, that one gets so many bonus points from me because of the sheer amount of Saurian in it. Uh, uh, <laughs> but Sotek, you're holding the plaque wrong. <laughs> Total War has it the right way. No, no. Not, listen, listen. Oh, fuck. According, according to Total War, if that's true, Tehinuin must have the most powerful, like these muscles Rick. right here must be just the most powerful part of his body as he's holding up an entire like stone black with just his fingers. Like, good God. Um, the Hobby Squire, who's going to win? A blind, stinky rat zealot or a vat-grown lizard zealot? <laughs> eh, you're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm fair, Hobby Squire, not unfair. <laughs> Says the ghoul draped in intestines. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Inquisitor Thomas, the Skaven were there for Gotrek and Felix, who were in the room upstairs. <laughs> oh my god. We're out here too! Holy shit! Who is this? <laughs> Thank was just down at the bottom being like, duped again! <laughs> of, co of course, Mike. Blaming his minions for not realizing there was a <laughs> diplomatic meeting of some of the most powerful characters. Uh, oh, jeez. That being said... Again. I would love to have seen Gotrek and Thorgrim Grudgebear in the same room because that would have been something. Because uh, the way Gotrek and Ungrim interact is fantastic. Uh, but Thorgrim would probably be one of the few that could really look at Th Gotrek and Gotrek would be like, sorry. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll shut up now. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, have these two ever faced off in the lore? They fight distantly during the end time. So their armies fight one another, but they themselves do not ever come face to face. Which is uh, just wrong. Yeah, Lord Skrulk well, ends up doing... I mean, Lord Skrulk ends up facing off with uh, Krokgar, and it does not go well for Lord Skrulk. <laughs> Though he does kill Grimlock, which was super sad. Um, still loading. Good evening, gentlemen. Unless you're a Skaven fan. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. I jumped for joy when I heard the announcement of the third host of Lorebeards, Krim Gelto. Oh, God, it's an amalgamation. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> Just, oh. just a, <laughs> a frog with a big mask on yeah just oh, a frog perfect. with a gold mask um so are you so are you're saying tanuin has weak arms uh let i just you know i just think that tanuin should be a little more observant of the laws of physics god god I, forbid i think it basically just shows how this battle is going to turn out he's just a little <laughs> uh would you call a necromancer slon Kremler? Kremler. Oh, oh, no. Hammond, uh, no. No. 
Uh, and Digi Desu Pichu, uh, can't wait until you do um, until mm. the who would win of Bellacore versus The Rock dropped <laughs> by Tic Tac Toe. <laughs> that is silly. Like, I know, that's, I know that's probably by no means even remotely close to considerable to canon, but it would be the funniest way for Bellacore to have died in all of the millennia of his existence is Tic Tac Toe dropped a rock on him. Like, that would just be so good. But... Yeah, it would certainly be a way to go, huh? So are we ready for this mighty matchup? I think we are. So we're going to take what we did last week and we flip mm -hmm. it. Uh, so for this week, uh, we start with Andy for the intro for Lord Scroke. Then we go to me. And then uh, I will start us off on Battlefield goodness. And the, we will get things up and rolling. Right. So uh, before I get started, um, we have a few things to say. Um, this is going to be probably the first of our matchups where we have a proper... I, I'm going to state it straight out right from the beginning before I start taking up a more partisan position. Lord Skrulk is so much harder than Tehenuin. Um, So part of this process is going to be you building and choosing an interesting setup to bring the two together. And when we first pitched this idea and we were discussing it between ourselves, how we would change how the who would win battles pitched out, out there, your inter interference, shall we say, your contributions to this are what make this, the matches much more fun. Taking everything Skrulk has and taking everything that Tehenuin has and pitching them together is far more equal than simply having them in a toe-to-toe -to -toe scrap. I mean, he's literally, in the Warhammer game alone, double the points of Tehenuin. He will eat him for breakfast. He has double the attacks. <laughs> he's got uh, two more that's points. Why, that's why we put Tehenuin on the engine <laughs> of the gods. <laughs> and we are going to have to do something to balance this one out. Now, I know I shouldn't be saying this because I'm taking up Lord Scrock's position, and I should definitely not be making any suggestions to any of you out there to balance it up. In fact, I should be saying the exact opposite. But before we begin, <laughs> I would like to say that if you're out there casting your vote or, or coming up with some clever ideas for how these two could get together, I would strongly recommend that you do something that makes for an interesting story or really does pitch them together in a way that lets me win. So everything I just said, ignore all of that because Lord Skrulk, he's going to win today. <laughs> sure he is. <laughs> Just sure like I won the last two times in my heart, if nothing else. Keep, so, keep, keep, taking taking your keep taking is your Is there utopium. anything you'd like to say before I give a quick intro to good old Lord Scroll? Uh, no, I think we're good to go. All right. Who is Lord Scroll? First, go check out our stream on Lord Scroll, and you will get a very long, in depth examination of exactly who this pox ridden skaven is to keep it nice and short so that you don't need to sit there and listen to me wax lyrical about stuff that we've already discussed at length lord skrulk is arguably one of the oldest most powerful skaven out there now we pitched him as someone who had failed during the 1100s imperial calendar um to wipe out all of the empire and had thus from that point forwards purposefully chosen not to lead clan pestilence to step down and never become nerglitch himself that doesn't really matter put all of that aside what we have is a centuries perhaps millennia old skaven who is pretty much the embodiment of everything that is clan's pestilence he is a disease walking he is rotten to his core he causes terror in anything that sees him and anything living that comes close to him simply dies plants fade and wither wherever he walks entire trees collapse he carries with him the good old liber bubonicus it is liber bubonicus he has isn't it i always yes. uh, forget the name bubonicus just make sure i don't get i always get caught up with my good old chaos Bubonicus. Liber Bubonicus, containing pretty much every nasty pestilent detail spell you ever require. And of course, he has his rod of corruption, a mighty flail that kills anything it touches. It's, it's quite literally. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what I call it too. Um, a flail that should it strike you, just so you understand how it works. Toughness tester, you die. This is where it's really bad for poor old, uh, old Tenuin, because he's not tough. 
at all, bless his soul. And uh, Skrok also is frenzied because he is out of his head. He's a plague priest, so his good old normal four attacks in Warhammer are double to eight. That means that he attacks and he attacks and he attacks <laughs> and he attacks. That's how frenzy and works. He attacks. Oh, yes, it does. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Frenzy he completely is plus one attack. <laughs> Uh, that's what it was now. It used to be double. And when the 8th edition was in, it was double. No, in 6th um, edition, it was plus 1. We're not <laughs> in 6th edition. 6th, 7th, and 8th edition, it was plus 1 attack. Watch it go. Oh, so there's man. our frenzy go. <laughs> um, and yeah, he uh, lays waste to everything that he gets his hands on. Cut a long story short, um, he's an incredibly tough, incredibly ancient leader of clan pestilence one of their primary play police and he carries weapons that are laden through not just with disease but everything that corrupts and destroys in the world he has a book filled with spells not just from the skaven but from chaos as well and he has a weapon that is so corrupt that anything it touches dies and that's anything it doesn't matter what you are it doesn't count as plague it doesn't count as poison it doesn't count as anything other than corruption and you die. So that's a brief intro to good old Skrulk. There you go. So uh, for those who don't know Tenwin, ju who just like Lord Skrulk, we have a very in-depth uh, Lorebeards episode about where we talk about uh, how we're dealing with an entity who quite literally brought fundamental change to the Lizardman as a species. Someone who was so intrinsically linked uh, with a divine force that he was able to uh, bring about the manifestation of an actual god into the material plane, at least for a time, uh, that uh, although he only uses the lore of beasts, it would probably have been more realistic if Games Workshop was thinking more carefully about their own background to have had him been a lore of light wizard. Yeah. But, you know, we'll stick uh, And uh, is a character who has a bizarre amount of knowledge, uh, truly showing that he is divinely backed up by a force that the old ones themselves stood behind knowing many of the secrets of the old ones knowing how to use many of their ancient technology that had been lost to all of the other lizard men to the point that he was even able to go into a room full of all of the slon and have a conversation with them to the point that he convinced them to change their minds on something uh which is absolutely bonkers uh, he is an extremely powerful wizard in his own right. Uh, every time that he shows up and is unleashing sorceries, he's nigh unstoppable. Uh, granted, he's only going up against Skaven wizards, which are not <laughs> quite the same. Uh, as they're wizards. both third level wizards. Yes, they are. <laughs> which is funny. Yeah, their, their lore translated their tabletop rules is funny uh, because they're both level three, which is actually really unique for special characters. It is because they're normally um, fours or a bit more. Yeah, yeah, it's like four, two, or one. Uh, generally speaking, but uh, three, I think they're like the only level three wizards in the game um, or close to it. Possibly, but yeah. um, uh, as far as what he brings into battle, uh, Tehinuin is always running around the Blade of the Serpent's Tongue, which was a special weapon that was, the, the history behind it is quite interesting in that it was forged in Chakwa and given some form of divine venom where it poisons everything, it stabs and stuff like that. Uh, but what's interesting about it is that it was forged before probably before Tehinuin was spawned, uh, because after Tehinuin you know, was spawned, it wasn't that long before the city itself fell, and he led a grand exodus out of the city, which means it was something that was likely created by skinks who were made for that purpose, even though they didn't know what the blade would do later on. Uh, so he has this uh, blade that makes him incredibly ferocious. Uh, he attacks with a serpentine grace, is what it's often described as, where he's Kind of like that system, if you ever watch Snakes, where they kind of snap forward very fast and their goal is just to inject you with some venom. That is Tanuin's preferred attack style. And when he's on the attack, he gets even stronger because the blade quite literally empowers him further. Uh, he also has uh, the Plaque of Sotek, which uh, across editions kind of got fused together with his armor because his armor used to be a different thing. Uh, where he has reasonably heavy armor uh, combined with his scaly skin because he's got those gold plates which interestingly are not actual gold uh, in most versions of the story, but they are instead the hide of a divine serpent that is, I guess, just looks like gold because it's so like hard or maybe it's been like, you know, plated with gold to make it more durable. I don't know. They, don't, they never explained that in the story, but uh, it is divinely protected. Uh, it allows him to have a ward save, so it turns aside blows that should hit him and pr protects him from uh, threats that would kill most things. 
uh, and also provides him with a surprising amount of armor. Uh, he is much tougher and much stronger than Skinks, quite frankly, have any right to be, uh, being more on par with a Saurus when it comes to his strength and toughness as opposed to a regular Skink. And, of course, he's Red Crested, which means he's incredibly aggressive. Uh, he's aggressive on the charge. He gets, like, all sorts of bonus attacks and bonus damage. Uh, he also uh, has the Red Crest immunity uh, to poisons, toxins, and plagues. Uh, to the point that anything from Clan Pestilence, when Tanuin was introduced, only affects Tanuin on a six instead of any other lower dice roll. And that included when he went up against the likes of the original Lord Nurglitch. Um, oh. But uh, other than that, he when he's running around, he always has a car carpet of snar serpents, snarpents, uh, serpents following him around that bite in, uh, people with poisonous attacks. And if he's not on the ground, he's on an engine of the gods, which he was responsible <laughs> for digging out of the forest. Which, of course, would mean he would be on a big old fucking Stegadon. But we will deal with that when we get into, like, the scope of the battles and whether or not that'll even matter. So, those are our introductions. We hope you're all excited. Let's get into Battlefield. Unless there's anything you need to bring up before we do that. Um, no, uh, I think we're quite happy. I think it's also worth noting that good old uh, Skrulk is a blind rat. Absolutely blind. His eyes rotted away and just melted from his face yet for all he's blind he can still <laughs> pluck a fly from the air just like that if of course any fly could survive getting close to him which they can't because anything that gets close to him just dies but yeah, I, I love the, the idea terror he, aside i like the idea that he makes that claim knowing that no fly will get close enough so you don't have to prove it <laughs> <laughs> can anything get close enough yeah quite uh, yeah. Alicor is a greater demon dead by a rock that's some wily coyote shit. Well, he's a demon prince, which, if anything, is even scarier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, much worse than a greater demon. To be fair, though, it was a lot of rocks. It wasn't just tic tac toe's rock. I think it was like a group of like five or six pterodons with tic tac toe. That's a lot of strength for auto hits. <laughs> but it was a rubbish way to go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lady Uli Elise Duchard is also a level three wizard. Yeah, but she's old world, which is. Yeah, that's old world. That's, that's different. Old world <laughs> has different. Uh, uh, I don't know what dynamic is the right word, but it's it's like a different setting. It's important, it but is. it's different. All right, so, Battlefield. So, for the battle that I am angling for uh, <laughs> in, the, in the greater scope of where I'm hoping to direct everyone, which, I, of course, I won't reveal yet, uh, my Battlefield is for us to have essentially an iconic rematch for the battle to take place in the place where long ago the ultimate fate of the Skaven and the Lizardmen had been decided and to have a rematch throwdown where Skrulk is trying to gain revenge and take this as an opportunity to uh, reclaim glory and put the, the star, so to speak, of the Great Horned Rat into ascendancy, whereas Tehenuin is returning to familiar ground uh, and is using his knowledge of this place against his enemy, that being the gloriously named Guacmol Crater. Uh, where in ages past, there was an unspeakably huge battle. Uh, and plus, it makes you think of guacamole. And who doesn't love guacamole? Uh, <laughs> uh, so that makes was you think of it. Yeah, makes oh, you think no. of it. Totally not just it. Um, oh. you might you might even say the battlefield looks like the space after you take the pit <laughs> out of a guacamole. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this would put us in the jungles of Lustria. Uh, essentially taking battle uh, amidst all the humidity and the dangers, the flora and the fauna that come with Lustria, uh, the horrible rains, and, uh, you know, would it give Tanwin a little bit of a home turf advantage? Sure. But, you know, Clan Pestilence, they should, you know, remember the place uh, through stories at the very least. <laughs> Tanwin's, of course, actually been there, being that he's uh, quite old. But uh, that will be my proposal is to go back to Guacmo Crater, which is essentially a bit of a cratered valley uh, that is within the jungles of Lustria. Alrighty. So option number one is a giant crater in the jungles of Lustria. There for Tehenuin and Skrull to meet. Alternatively, we could go with option number two. Option number two is going to take us down into a completely different part of the world. And I've had a wee think, and I think it would be quite fun for us to have 
something very different for a battlefield, something that you wouldn't normally expect for these two in particular to deal with. Somewhere that lies outside perhaps both of their comfort zones. And I'm going to go for the Desert Savarabi. The Ooh, Desert Savarabi, you say? Why would I choose this? Well, it's in the middle of bloody nowhere to begin with, which makes you immediately go, why would they be there? However, as we may or may not know if we've watched our previous streams, good old clan pestilence has significant holdings down in the Southlands, and they have also got many issues with, uh, let's say, the Arabians to the north. And I would like to loosely pitch um, the Lizardmen doing what Lizardmen love to do best, and that's interfering with good old Skaven just going about their good old business and pretty much hiking it halfway across the world, perhaps using paths of the old ones or moving down old ley lines or some alternative way of getting their asses over there and staging an attack down into Skrulk and his Skaven hordes, hopefully. Let's hope that that's the scheme of scope of the battle, if not just Skrulk in Araby, um, in a, <laughs> depending on what the scale is, um, in Araby, um, in an ancient ne- by an ancient Nekaran tomb, where the, the I'm going to imagine it's just as the moons are beginning to rise, the day has got cooler, and the sand is blowing around in swirls, and we're right by an old undead edifice. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. All right. So chat now that, so we have uh, a battle outside uh, beside a great edifice of the tomb Kings or ancient Nehekara in the deserts of Araby uh, towards the later part of the day. Uh, and then we have a battle taking place in uh, near the walkable crater in the jungles of Lustria. Uh, let's see what chat comes up with. So this is the point where y'all need to throw everything you can stick at the wall uh, we'll kind of pull up ones to look at um, to that catch our <laughs> interest. Location, enchilada. <laughs> uh, Games Workshop. Uh, Try harder, guys. Please, uh, no. Uh, Charles BK says, the battlefield should be within the paths of the old ones themselves. Both forces found their way inside there through secret paths on our, on, uh, from opposite ends of the world and meet within the confines. Uh, which uh, is certainly an interesting one to consider. The past of the old ones has, a, if you've ever read uh, stories that include them, they are not a great place to be. Uh, it is a place that you go through and get out of very quickly because any other option is probably a bad time. Uh, the, the same pub that Thorgrim and Tyrion fought in moments afterwards. Uh, 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 Jacob, no. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we we will. Yeah, uh, remember that we will be picking, and we're gonna pick ones that are interesting. Uh, so if you want it to be a joke, it has to be a very very good joke. Um, let's see, battle on the side of a massive cliff, <laughs> just a cliff somewhere. What was the name of the pub? Uh, the, the Bell and Bucket. We don't want to ruin the Bell and Bucket. That would be that would be sad. <laughs> Fuck it, they ball. They're fighting over Morslib, <laughs> so they both just. Well, we all later. know that Morslib is made of cheese, so it's um very much of interest to <laughs> good old Skrulk. Green cheese? Yes. Festering green cheese? I'm up there. To Morslib we go. Let's see. Okay, I'm seeing some more Pass of the Old Ones. Uh, Elizabeth City. <laughs> abandoned Black Ark <laughs> on the Feet. Uh, the Chaos yes, Place. Uh, looking for a splintered piece of the Twin-Tailed Comet. Well, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea concept. at all. I'm um, chaos by the chaos waste. Uh, battle in the sewers somewhere. Sewers of Nuln. Uh, let's see. That's more of a type of battle. The other ways of we're looking for. We're um, particularly we're, just to make sure you understand what sort of comments you should be throwing here. We're looking for a location, not what sort of battle we'll be having, but a location. So it wouldn't be they're battling to push each other off a cliff. It would be on a cliff edge with the churning waters boiling away down below, perhaps from one ocean or another, the Sea of Chaos, perhaps. So yep. we're looking for a location to have our battle. 
yeah, I'm going to give you all a couple more minutes to come up with something that really grabs at us. Uh, the the Pass of the Old One one is kind of interesting. The one in the Chaos Waste is kind of interesting. Uh, CB4N, uh, Enchilada is actually interesting, though. Famous red crested skink spawned in an ancient temple city, wiped out by a mysterious plague in ancient times. Yeah, it's kind of a, uh, like a corrupted Lizardman city. Uh, right, if, offers... we're, if we're going for something new, we really want to have something that's not one of the choices we've got on already, which is Araby or, alternatively, Lustria. So we're looking for something a bit different. <laughs> Athelorin, so both sides can experience hostile nature. Oh, Athelorin and Skrulk would not get on. That would yeah. be super fun. It's like, ah, yes, he's riding away the the plants. Oh, the plants are getting very upset about this. <laughs> yeah, that that would certainly be uh, bad. Oh, I, that'd be quite fun, actually. Um, so, yes, do we have any other? And if you are presenting a location, try to think of um, some sort of story for why they might be there. We're not talking about the size of the location or what the fight's about, just why they might be there. All right, I'm going to start a timer on my phone. That way I'm not just there. I'm going to give you all two more minutes. Tops. That sounds good uh, to me. Uh, let's see. Uh... <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, what if the reason for their fighting is Thinkle redirected uh, Tehenwin into Skrull to try and kill him while he's mm. trying a second go at the Black Plague in Middenheim? So maybe the sewers of Middenheim? So we um, need somewhere for them to be for that to work, because um, I, I think there's definitely a good excuse for why they'd be there, i.e. Thanquil's got something else he's doing that's perhaps going to get interrupted by a certain red-crested skink, so thus that red crested skink gets channeled somewhere else or alternatively might be interrupted by Skrulk. Um, so thus trying to push Skrulk back. But you really want to have a good location to make sure that makes sense. And uh, Tehenuin is not someone that's known for his world traveling ways. So finding a way for him to get to one place to another or why he's going from one place to another is worth having a little think about. Mm, uh, a battle taking place uh, among the, the the feral lands of the Dragon Isles, as both have... Good old Dragon Isles, like them. ...brought there for different reasons. Uh, let's see. How about the blasted waste near the Southern Pole? So someone kind of brought that up earlier, so we kind of have that floating in our brains. Uh, it should take place in the Maelstrom, where a lost plaque of the Old Ones has uh, washed up along with uh, great amalgamations of warp stone. Uh, drawn in from the Warp oceans. Stone. Uh, let's see. Um, they both show up in Wei Jin. How did they get to the floating city? Who knows? <laughs> but, but they're up there. Uh, all right. Um, I I think last time I picked, so I'm going to let Andy pick from all the ones he's heard. Because time's up. Right. So yeah, having had a good uh, look through all those, and I'm definitely not going to be pulling on, for example, yet another N, just to make sure we're super clear here. Yeah, no repeats, um, guys, no repeats. We, we, we had an N last time, so we're looking for something quite different. Now, there's been a couple of uh, suggestions for chaos waste, both north or south. I think there's definitely something in that, um, particularly given that the chaos waste were created effectively by the old ones. So there's definitely reasons for the Lizardmen to potentially be investigating or wanting to go there. And there's also potentially reasons for Skrulk to go there too because of the Warpstone. And if we are talking Warpstone, I think the Southern um, Pole makes far more sense than the Northern, given that we know that the Southern Pole is absolutely laid, well, it's laid waste by Warpstone and there's still large chunks of it down there, something the Skaven are particularly interested, as we all know. So I think um, pitching ourselves down in the Southern Chaos Wastes is a really unexpected choice, and I quite like it, because it's different. So we have ourselves as our three choices. Number one, we have Home Turf for the Lizardmen. The Guacamole, because I'm not calling it anything else. Crater. Guacamole so, sounds way <laughs> less dumb. <laughs> it really does. But our Guacamole, I, I say you shouldn't vote for this one because it is so freaking dumb, but if you like freaking dumb, go for it. That's number one. That gives us a Lizardman home advantage. The next option is in the deserts of Araby, where neither side truly have an advantage. And the story will probably be the Lizardman on the attack um, on the Lith on the Skaven. Or alternatively, down in the southern pole, where we'll need to come up with some excuse for why the two of them are coming together. Although there are many obvious stories that can be built around that concerning old one artifacts or alternatively over on the other side warp stone by the bucket load so that's our three do you have um the pool sorted on your side uh yes 
Alrighty, yeah, so the polls up. will be going up on uh, Twitch and on YouTube. And if you wish, you can vote on both sides. So you don't need to just vote on one or the other. We tend to find, because our Twitch numbers are far lower than our YouTube numbers, that Twitch votes actually have a far greater impact. So if you want to have uh, more bang for your vote, go dive into Twitch and do a quick clicky, clicky, clicky over there. But beyond that, we'll put the vote up for how long, do you reckon? Uh... Three minutes, four minutes? Five yeah, minutes? about yeah, about three, four, four to five minutes ish. Um, four to five minutes sounds good to me. Yeah, let's um, take care of some housekeeping stuff while that's going. Uh, real quick. Uh, first of all, Mercy Matt, thanks so much for the raid on Twitch. Appreciate it. Hope you're all having a great day. We are doing a Who Would Win. So this is a series that me and Andy have been doing on Wednesday evenings, where we uh, pitch two characters or concepts against one another, and the chat y'all get to vote on the circumstances of the battle, and then me and Andy have to have horribly angry raid nerve rage <laughs> arguments. You're gonna die <laughs> about why our character would win, uh, and then there's a vote in the aftermath where people get to vote on who they think won. But it's a great chance to explore lore and also just talk about really bizarre uh, circumstances. Mm. Um, and uh, also, Andy, what's that? What's that thing behind your shoulder over there? Oh, you mean you mean Dark Deeds over Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's what? what well, is what's that? Dark Deeds? Oh, uh, well, yeah. Dark Deeds. It is Deeds. a question. <laughs> it's the new wonderful game put together by Mark Gibbons and Andy Chambers, who you may know from his many ancient Warhammer. And I, I am bringing up ancient since we've already discussed ancient Warhammer rules and ancient frenzy rules, which I'm going to abide by. Double attacks, not plus one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, by Andy Chambers and Mark Gibbons. It's an absolutely marvelous game that's been put together by Rookie Publications, which is a company I co-own. Yay! And if you want more details about it, you can pop over to Medifius's website right now. I will indeed find a link for you so I can post it in a moment. But it's a game of playing malicious minions in a dark fantasy city and is designed to be just a super fun um, hour or so with your friends as you backstab each other and steal each other's stuff and have basically a lot of fun. It's a really good board game. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so make sure y'all check that out and he'll post the link in chat, uh, which we would really appreciate. If y'all consider checking that out and watching it and all that jazz. Um, but uh, as far as... So make sure you get in your votes. Quick, 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 quick. Uh, once again, you can vote on both Twitch and YouTube if you wish. Uh, keep in mind that voting on Twitch tends to carry a higher weight uh, because it is by percentage of votes, not by the number of people for votes. Mm -hmm, so even though mm -hmm. we see that 120 people have voted on YouTube, for instance, versus only about 30 people on Twitch, uh, it's percentage-based, so the Twitch weights have quite a wait. Man, I don't know where I was going with that sentence. Uh, so, so I'm anyway, still in Minecraft land. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What were y'all? What were y'all doing in Minecraft? That was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, if you've uh, arrived to the stream late, um, we started this stream late as well because I was busy playing Minecraft with my wife and completely lost track of the time. <laughs> it's uh, rather embarrassing to admit, but we were just busy building. I was building, uh, just to show how much of a geek I am, I was building a gigantic temple to Ulrich because <laughs> why not? <laughs> um, and having just... myself the time of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, wait a minute. What's the time? And then I went over and saw a message from uh, saying, Oi, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> I may have panicked. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I think we're actually... Mm, mm, How okay, close I'm... is that? How close is the vote? How close is the vote? I have, I'm it, not watching it, so I don't it, know. It doesn't look super close, to be honest, which is why I'm kind of thinking I'm just going to go ahead and call it. Sounds good. Which one's ahead? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and call it there. Uh, so we've got on YouTube a whopping 48% came in for the mm -hmm. Southern Chaos Waste. Ooh, and on Twitch, the winner is at 50% the Southern Chaos Waste. Southern Chaos Waste, okay. Yeah. I regret so using that now. Okay. Woo. Yeah. All right. Okay, so <laughs> am I going first this time? Um, yes. <laughs> I'm like, how? <laughs> I'm gonna spend this, but all right. Okay, so now we have the conflict. What type of conflict are we looking at? What is the nature of their battle? Is it an ambush? Is it somehow a siege? Is it a, a duel one on one? Is it a no? We're not. That's the scale. This is just the uh, oh yeah, you're right. The scale. Uh, yes, yeah, it will be next. Um, yeah, so is this it, is just is why are they why are they fighting? 
Yeah. What's are they going having down? An axe throwing competition? Are they having a drill no. contest? Um, wait, is it a t-shirt wet t-shirt contest? contest? Oh, <laughs> seriously, Grey Feet. Uh, <laughs> I'm calling it now. Scrock wins because he's got all the hanging bits underneath. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, that all aside. Uh, right, so the obvious thing for me to choose would be, oh, they are fighting over some sort of artifact or warp stone or something, and they just happen to have themselves a big scrap. But I think I'd like to go over something a little bit more um, interesting. Um, so we've got ourselves the great shattered landscape of the Southern Waste, which have long ago turned to almost pure chaos, where it's difficult to determine what is and what is not even materially real. Warpstone is everywhere. Shattered remnants of whatever it was that blew up here may once have been the case, but are no longer. They have been warped by chaos into something so twisted and broken and different to almost be alien in terms of what they once were. So we've got ourselves this weird, lurid landscape. And we've got ourselves two forces who are going to be down here for a reason. And we need a good reason for this. The obvious one would be an artifact. Um, but I'm leery of choosing that just because it is so obvious. Um, I think I would prefer that Skrulk be not so much chasing an artifact, but chasing lore. Because we all know that Skrulk is fascinated um, by, and indeed almost driven by his need to determine the uh, every last detail, in fact, about disease. And the idea of having um, some of this lore hidden away in what is effectively the realm of chaos, down by perhaps uh, somewhere that is massively infested by Nurgle, seems exceedingly likely. And indeed, the Libra Bubonicus itself was taken in very much these circumstances. So I like the idea that he is in pursuit of um, lore that the old ones themselves um, would be scared of. Um, and good old Slan have sent uh, to Henuin or to Henuin himself has come because of visions, whatever it may be. They are both, after all, prophets of their god. And he uh, is here seeking out what will be the end of the lizard men? He is seeking out the plague of all plagues that will destroy them forever. Um, and obviously, the lizardmen cannot allow that to happen. So, my idea is um, a three way fight. Oh, okay, interesting. Between... We have ourselves a three way fight between um, Nurgle and Skaven and lizardmen. And none of them are on each other's side. Hmm. Okay. Um, so um, whether th whether uh, through the scale of the battle, because uh, the scale of the battle is where we decide often the tiny minutiae, how exactly does the story unfold? Um, whether that the scale of the battle is tight um, and it's just they're finally about to arrive there and all three parties are intermingled and attempting to stop it, whether it's a far grander scale and the Skaven has swept into the Nurgle forces and the Lizardmen tried to take advantage of this, that's to be decided. But for me, it's a three-way fight um, in the Chaos Waste to the south. All right. Hmm. Okay. So my proposal is that uh, Tehenuin and Skrulk share something very deeply in common, something that has brought them down across the ocean, one from the Southlands, one from Lustria. They have crossed through the warp storm, uh, the warp hurricanes and all the horrible things uh, that the elves on their little islands are so keen to protect the rest of the world from. And the two have braved what is honestly probably one of the most horrible places in the world because there's nothing there to try and hold back the awfulness. It has complete rain. Even the northern chaos ways at least has some humans and dark elves and other things um, moseying about trying to keep things tamped down a little bit. But here, it is truly hell on earth. But the thing that has brought the two of them here is that they're here for gods. Because at the end of the day, the southern chaos wastes have so much warp stone and it's so close to where the fabric of reality is shearing away that this is the footstep to the domain of the gods. And the two of them have come here because due to prophecy or discovery or scientific advancement or whatever, they have discovered, they think, a potential way to take advantage of how thin the veil has gotten 
to either make contact with or potentially even bring a piece of their god into the material plane <laughs> and cause absolute havoc with Tehenuin coming here to once again try and repeat his success of summoning Sotek into the material world to devour the enemies of the Lizardmen. Meanwhile, Lord Squilk has arrived to call upon the Great Horned Rat and to tr who has also successfully been summoned into the material plane before mm. uh, in order to learn all of the truest secrets of the most dastardly of plagues so that he can bring about the end of all things, the ruination of the world so that they can inherit. Now, the nature of their duel is that because they're here for how magically powerful the environment is, how charged it is, this is not a place where you can have a typical fight. Not really. Bringing armies here is tantamount to suicide in many ways because you're going to draw attention to yourself. Uh, and also just getting your armies... Careful not to hit on scale. True. Uh, careful, so careful. <laughs> instead of relying on a battle with swords, instead of re relying on a battle with uh, regular weapons, it instead ends up being a duel of magic because the whole place is saturated with sorcery. So what we're going to have here is a magical duel with the full might of uh, the Skaven and Lizardman forces trying to use, basically on a continent that in and of itself is an arcane fulcrum, unleashing their sorcery against one another to claim dominance. Okay, so we have ourselves um, option number one, which is a three-way battle. Option number two, a magical duel. What is option number three? That lies with you. So do make some comments. How could you see these two forces meeting? And what sort of battle do you think that they could have down in the southern chaos wastes? The choice is quite literally yours. Tap it out. Drop in some comments and we'll bring them up and we will choose one of them. We'll pop up another vote to determine what kind of battle we will have. Yep. Sally suggests a, a theological debate between <laughs> Lord Skrook and Tanuin, uh, uh, presumably with translators, <laughs> between them on the national. <laughs> 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 you just hear like uh, just a serpent. <laughs> just a human going, what is, what is happening? <laughs> um, Tanuin visiting uh, uh, his his old buddy Oxyodel with Skrulk following. Uh, I don't think Oxyodel will be happy to see either of them, to be totally honest with you guys. Inquisitor Thomas, the window tax riot has sprung <laughs> in the southern chaos place. Hey, Skrog is leading the rioters while Tanuin has joined the Reichsguard. What? Quite right, too. <laughs> uh, okay, let me, let me, uh, and then Hammond, one might say that Tanuin wants Sotek to devour the enemy within. Lost trail. Lost trail. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, that's not a stretch at all. All right, let me. Uh, so this is appropriate for what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just move on swiftly from that one. <laughs> Coming out and going, wait, I'm supposed to be somewhere else right now. <laughs> it's not uh, a magic off. It's a god off. Hype up their deity to smite their foes. A god off. Uh, well, they see. are basically both prophets of their god, so not oh, entirely okay. inappropriate. Nim's way says they don't want to be there, but have been drawn here. And it's simply a last man standing to survive as long as possible. You know that this is not um, a, a terrible idea, actually. If you've ever played Chaos in the Old World, a game by Eric Lang. Um, Great that was, board game. Great yeah, board super game. fun. Um, it's not frightfully balanced, but it's super fun. <laughs> um, Zinch, um, it, all of the cards that Zinch have are nicely summed up as fuck with your day cards. Because they just come in and go, you, you're actually over there. You, ha ha, all the things you have no longer work. You are suddenly fighting against the opposite of what you thought. So that's not a terrible idea, actually. Quite like the idea of um, perhaps it's an external source that brought them together. And it's, so, uh, it's a fight for survival rather than a fight in another fashion. <laughs> I like Andy's idea with one more faction, but he should have picked Fishman. The Fishman! <laughs> glob, glob, glob. Buy food. I did miss that one, didn't I? Maybe next time. Uh, so I will note for people that are tossing in ideas... While we we heavily suggest you include a reason of why, remember that you're trying to say a type of battle as opposed to just why they're fighting. That's great, mm -hmm. but make sure to add on the critical part of what kind of fight as opposed to just why. Um, like this one, 
this one is this one's good, but it doesn't speculate like what the type of fight is. Yeah, the uh, like, reason why. What is the conflict? For example, the um, previous one where they suggested that Zinch should be messing with the day, that was the situation, but the type of conflict was made clear. Survival. Um, and that's super fun. So um, try to make sure that you add on something that describes what the victory involves. What yeah, do so they like, have to do? Yeah, so Lord what is the fight? Lord Eisen suggests the genuinely rare uh, occasion of a double ambush where they're both <laughs> interpreting a prophecy about one another and trying to use that for an ambush. That would be a genuine clusterfuck of a situation. But like, that is something that's probably actually happened within Warhammer Fantasy, which is cool. Yeah. Agreed. Um, let's see if any uh, ones jump out at me. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> the amount of people trying to throw Thankful into oh, the mix. Sorry. No, no. That, that's no, there's a Zinch tricky one there. Uh, Zinch has tricked them into an ambush where the blue scribes have managed to get the Liber Bubonicus and the Sacred Plaque. Both have to recover their important item first from the demons and escape. That's a very that's a nice. interesting concept. That's a nice clear battle and a nice clear uh, victory condition. Thanks very much for that one, Stambu. Yeah, that is not bad. Uh, let's see. Uh, both have shipwrecked and are stranded. First one to get out. I feel like that kind of falls under survival. Mm. Um, okay, so it seems like it seems like Chad has kind of landed between survival or essentially kind of loot. Um, mm, those are both really good. Both, like both, are attempt, both are attempting to capture or slay a rare southern chaos waste. Penguin, Penguin Beastman! Beast <laughs> yeah, I'm well True, up for that. <laughs> truly the most dastardly species. Uh, oh, okay, that was that one. Uh, Nurglitch has a way to stop the salon from bouncing back Morselib, and that requires a ritual in the south. To anyone has been sent to stop the ritual. So Skrulk mm -hmm. attempting mm -hmm. to complete a ritual with anyone attempting to interrupt it. Um... <laughs> They engage in a Warhammer Fantasy tabletop battle. <laughs> oh, with um, old rules for my double um, uh, attacks with Frenzy, of course. No, we're not going back to, like, I don't know, 5th edition? <laughs> I, I'm 4th. Uh, I have, I have oh, fond sorry. memories, sorry, I have fond Andy, memories I was, of using Scroll in 4th edition. I probably wasn't even in elementary school yet. My bad. Yeah, <laughs> where, where I had my painted Scroll mincing everyone with his mighty rod of corruption. Take that any way you want. Um, God, right, so I wish Frenzy was double attacks. That'd be amazing for my Minotaur build. It used build. to be, and it was uh, freaking let's awesome. <laughs> uh, let's see. A siege versus Skrull can make shit camp as he's trying to subdue a greater demon uh, of Nurgle to anyone who's there to try and stop him before he succeeds. All right, so I think... Okay, read all these. Actually, a lot... Of, genuinely some really good ideas here. Like, yeah, I think I nice saw stuff. three or four that jumped out at me. But we can only pick one. We can. Um, so I'm going to narrow it down to two. I'm going to flip a coin because I got these little like Aztec coins um, that are. I mean, who doesn't like that idea? Themed. So, uh, what two do you like? Strip poker. Oh, no. no. No one wants to see it. Ah. Also, Tehenowin's got like one article of clothing. <laughs> he can only lose one hand. <laughs> um, so, uh, I think I'm going to narrow it down between the survival battle where the two of them do not mm -hmm. want to be there, but for some reason have been drawn there and their goal is to mm -hmm. survive as long as possible. And like the that. second one, I really like the idea that Zinch or the Blue Scribes has stolen the most mm -hmm. important lore artifact from both of them. So I love both of those. So, yeah, yeah. I'm well and, up for that. So, I'm going to flip a coin. Uh, if I get heads, we will do the, for the chat vote, we will do the uh, survival. And if I mm -hmm. get tails, we'll do the blue scribe. Blue theme. scribes. So. Uh, Being dicks. And I'm going to do heads <laughs> is the one that has the, this image. It's just okay. skull? <laughs> no, it's, um, I don't, mm, it's hard to describe actually. I'm just going to flip it. I got. The fact you have to think is not a good yeah, sign. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So I got tails. So it's blue scribes. Blue scribes. So the blue scribes have somehow managed to make off with the Liber Bubonicus and the sacred plaque, leaving both of our, let's say, heroes without their most famous of artifacts, both of whom are looking to try and recover it from those demons. The question is, can they do so? So that would be the third of our three battles. So that's going to be basically a, a find and kill. 
Fight, retrieve, find, a find retrieve, and retrieve battle. Let's say, retrieve, yeah, find and yeah. retrieve. Find and retrieve. Because presumably, yeah, whoever successfully retrieves could make away with both of them. Hmm? Yeah, could yeah, be quite, quite interesting. That could so be maybe, super probably, fun. Probably just to destroy the other one, but still, uh, would be pretty debilitating. So that gives us three choices. We have ourselves a three-way battle where we have the two forces you expect plus chaos as a part of that process. Do you want it to just be chaos or do you want it to be Nurgle chaos? I think Nurgle, that'd be good. Okay, cool. Um, just because it's fun and who doesn't like a bit of demonic Nurgle? I mean, uh, then thematically makes sense, doesn't it? Slash that, means we can, that means we can also pull in one of the chat's um, suggestions of perhaps a greater demon of Nurgle being captured. Or being somehow subdued by Skrulk and the Nurgle forces coming in to try and free it, for example. So we can get a nice mm. mixture of the chat stuff in if we do that one. And then um, uh, artifact, artifact retrieval, retrieval race from Blue Scribes. Have you got your one in as well? Yes. Excellent. Now I just gotta copy all of those and put them over here, and then we will start. And I'm gonna give you all three minutes on the. Oh, okay. Someone already got it going. Okay, cool. Uh, in which case, wait, why is it upset? Start. Why can't I start? Oh, I think I've used too many. We'll just do that. Mm, why is it not like this? Ah, there we go. <laughs> I had too many characters in one of the things. All right. All right. So while that's going, uh, the poll's up. So go vote, 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 go vote. Um... Uh, so it's, yeah, so it's the three-way battle, the magic battle, so, like, spells and stuff being flung everywhere, and the artifact retrieval race, which would introduce a whole bunch of other things we'd have to consider. Um, while we're doing that, uh, just a couple of more little housekeeping things, because these provide almost nice little commercial breaks. Um, <laughs> commercial um, break. If you haven't yet already, uh, make sure that, uh, A, if you're here, you know, follow and subscribe, whatever. Uh, but also be sure to go check out the Lawhammer channel. I actually could happily say I have finally caught up on the Lawhammer Ooh. series. Uh, ah! It ended on a ah! hell of a doozy uh, ah! that is like hilariously relevant to the new book coming out for AOS this weekend uh, with uh, Which Moray I would just like to say is entirely coincidental. 100% coincidental. We made this, show at this point. We made yeah, we made this character about a year and a half ago. Um <laughs> long before Age of Sigmar had come up with a character that's not just slightly similar that is scarily similar, but we're all drawing from the same sources. So it's not a surprise, but it was quite the episode. Yep, yep, yep. Um but uh, it's an excellent series. I genuinely cannot recommend it enough, especially if you're a big lore buff. Obviously, there are a lot of things that kind of go into what you could call the Lawhammer universe, where there are specific things that are changed around. But that's also the beauty of uh, Warhammer in general, is that yeah. you see people's unique takes. Uh, and it is an excellent... Uh, also, um, I'm, I'm probably... I'm really wanting to kind of probably do streams where we just kind of do a watch through. So if that's something that kind of interests you and you're like, I would like to watch this, but I need more context. You might want to show up to those. Those could be kind of fun uh, because I there are reasons I want to go back to the beginning um, and kind of do a rewatch through because there's a lot of things that have happened that make you go, wait, is this about Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, just a reminder, folks, you can vote on both streams. Um, the vote is pretty close. Uh, so make sure you check those out. So especially if you're like, oh, mine is losing on this one. Maybe I could go check this other one and I could win there. Um, then, uh, you know, that is totally a thing you could do. And that's actually looking like that is going to happen because two different ones are winning this time. Oh, um, I'm very excited. Do you like but, to uh, hear that? Uh, the only other things, um, y'all got anything coming up on Rookery this week? Um, yeah, I'm going to be streaming um, this Saturday at 7 p.m. UK. We've yet to... Last week we did um, a, a pretty good stream. It went down really, really well about learning long-term campaigns and how to do oh, them to in role-playing <laughs> games. It's a really good one. I do recommend going back. There wasn't just some hints or tips for that uh, in that one. There was a shed load. And we got a lot of comments throughout the course of that. It was one of our most watched streams in a while. So we're going to do another similar one this weekend about role-playing. So that's going to be at 7 p.m. UK time this Saturday. 
Um, and again, just to make sure, if you do want to come and watch um, Lawhammer Live, that is on Fridays at 7 p.m. UK time over on Lawhammering Twitch. Yep, and uh, I will note that the Rookery Publications YouTube channel uh, has a lot of amazing videos to watch if you're into role-playing or just writing and stuff like that, uh, to the point that I actually recommended it to a group I know that is running D&D for, like, therapy uh, stuff, and they've got they've been telling me they've gotten a lot of really fantastic, useful information out of that because uh, they're running D&D for therapy for children, and it's going really well. Uh, lovely. So, time is is up all right how'd the vote go how'd the vote go how'd the vote go i want to know so on youtube the three-way battle but with the demons of nurgle is oh. at 48 percent wow with the 48 uh-huh with the artifact retrieval race uh, only at 39 percent so only nine percent behind meanwhile on twitch uh Nurgle Skaven and Rats came in at 41%, knocking them up to a whopping 89. 89. But Reclaim the Artifacts came sweeping in at 52%, knocking them up to 91. Oh, that was close. So it is a two percentage point difference, but Reclaim the Artifacts has won. All right, so we have lost our artifacts, and the blue scribes are yeah, whisking that... them down towards the southern pole, and we have taken up pursuit. I love that shit. Yeah, so the next question really is: fuck with both characters How big time. or small is this battle? This is the last of our three choices. Obviously, we're both going to pitch one version of what this battle could be, and then we're going to pass it over to you to come up with a third option. And I do believe you're first this time. I am first this time. So. In light of this change, which dramatically alters everything I had been thinking up until that moment, um, <laughs> uh, a sacred plaque has been stolen from the Lizardmen, and a, a, an incredibly potent sacred book has been stolen from a greater clan of the Skaven. These would be horrifically dramatic events. Uh, this would not be a like a small affair this would not be a oh we're gonna send like a little attack squad no this is we're sending legions uh so i am thinking that this is actually going to be an immense scale conflict of we're talking thousands of lizardmen and tens of thousands of skaven to keep things appropriately even for the respective races because if you put equal <laughs> amounts of skaven versus equal <laughs> amounts of lizardmen it's not going to go well for the skaven but ultimately <laughs> While there, I think there's going to be a lot of fighting between those forces as they're naturally drawn to one another and start fighting, the goal is to punch through uh, the defenses that the Blue Scribes have erected around them to whatever library they've managed to take these artifacts back to and uh, for uh, the heroic squad. So I guess, you know, actually, interestingly, I guess I would edit it to the only thing that really matters being the group that punches through to get to the big library at the oh. end. The battle's um, changing as we go. Yes, uh, because when I think about it, I don't think those big hordes would actually get past fighting amongst each other and fighting the demons, which would technically fall into the three-way battle. When it comes to the actual library itself, I think what you would see would be Tehenuin leading uh, a squad of monstrous things. Like, he's up on an engine of the gods, <laughs> furious. Of course uh, he is. <laughs> with a basically a arrow point of Stegodons just punching its way through. While Lord Skrulk uh, is going to be basically honor guard would be the way that I would put it. The character in their honor guard where Skrulk is probably going to have much more in the way of numbers, but we're talking about the most fervent and feverish of plague monks and uh, plague sensor bearers and to Hennuin with only the most elite of his red crested skinks and several stegodons. Yeah, nah, that doesn't sound like fun. No, I think um, <laughs> I, I think we just go for fun. Um, I think we just go for uh, super fun, right? So we've got ourselves a our big potential conflict here because actually I kind of agree that this would be an event of some significance for both parties. A sacred plaque getting lost is never a good start. Equally, losing the Liber Bubonicus, losing oh, that core central text to Clam Pestilence, that's going to cause an immediate uh, reaction. Now, the question is how big. I quite like the idea of a big reaction. I quite like the idea of perhaps um, a, a swift force being organized to 
resolve this, uh, skitter-leaping their way halfway across the world to try and resolve the loss of this great sacred artifact, definitely. They are both um, they both have gods on their side who are going to be pointing in the correct direction. They both have enormous quantities of troops at their disposal because of their requisite positions. It makes sense that they would be going there. However, um, I think that when it comes down to it, what we really want is the ultimate in epic battles, and that's the pair of them facing off the blue scribes in the middle. Um, I, I, what I want to see is a, a, a representation of this battle with just character versus character versus the blue scribes, not a three way <laughs> battle. Okay, because the, the blue scribes are doing nothing more than trying to protect themselves. Um, the prize is the scribes, not necessarily killing the force on the other side. But we're just talking the two characters deep down in this library in the most cursed part of the world with the blue scribes holding off between them and Scrolls flail swinging and Tenuin's blade flashing in the gleaming light. So I'm saying mano a mano for the first time in our who will win? Let's do it. Man to man. Rat to skit lizard man. Whatever. Um, <laughs> one on one with blue scribes in the middle, basically trying not to die. All right. Interesting. Uh, all right, chat. So now is time. This is the last time that y'all get to mm -hmm. do a vote uh, for this particular stream. Um, so uh let's see some ideas from y'all of the scale of the battle so mm -hmm. you're talking about what exact things would be participating in the fight that would matter for the discussion so if in your head you're like oh well, i imagine it kind of being this thing but only this little part would matter um you know leave that out but you could do either you know gigantic armies you could do uh, uh you so me and andy have kind of suggested i did sort of a, an elite honor guard uh mm -hmm. plus the characters themselves um, though I notably am including Tenuin on his Stegadon. Uh, Andy <laughs> is not God. including the Stegadon. <laughs> um, in a mono -a mono fight. Um, so... Who would win? So, the Stegadon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as, as long as it wins, I, I don't care. Yeah, quite. <laughs> um... So, <laughs> throw everything! <laughs> yes, yes, everything! <laughs> uh, let's see. So, uh, <laughs> Tehenuin has an Arcanadon. Okay, I know what that is. Skrulk has a rat Canadon <laughs> with Chimera <laughs> rats. I didn't realize that Skrulk took a loan out from Clan Mulder for this escapade. You know, needs must when the warp tokens spend. Yep. Uh, <laughs> League guard ambushed by beastmen, Navy sealsmen. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, no. <laughs> uh, hmm. Let's see. So what we're looking for out there is an idea for the scale of this conflict. Um, how big or how little should it be? Um, how important is the nature? Plus, the nature of what they're fighting over as well has been established, but we can add a victory condition here, which perhaps consolidates the battle at a different scale than you might originally expect. So if you've got any sort of ideas for how that could manifest, do drop it into the chat and we will be choosing one of those. Yep. Oh man, this is going to be super interesting, especially if the votes end up close because the blue scribes are involved. So like, man, some shenanigans could go down big time. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Total War ever three turn domination tourney battle. No, I don't think that's technically a, sca <laughs> a scope of battle. Though I guess if you wanted to say like a typical, uh, if you wanted to say like a typical Total War sized army, so you're kind of dealing with like you know armies in the low thousands. Uh, mm -hmm. for for the Skaven like medium to high thousands, but for the Lizardmen low to uh, low to medium thousands, that would be reasonable uh, to say. So could Lord Scroll bring a bigger army if he took a shortcut through Nurgle's garden. I'm sure it would be a literal, a literal walk in the park for him. <laughs> ah, hello, walk in the park. Yeah, you you might you might think that, but if you go back and watch our Lord Skrulk, uh stream, uh, you may realize that Nurgle and Clan Pestilence are not the same thing. <laughs> they're not they're not the best pals. Yeah, there are some deep disagreements there, because you have to remember the whole, like, Skrulk killing everything around him 
uh, would probably apply in Nurgle's garden, and that would yep. deeply upset yeah. everything in the garden. Yeah, Skrulk is Skrulk is just not normal. Um, and whilst we obviously recognize that Nurgle is also not normal, they are differently not normal. Um, so yeah, super fun. All right, chat. I'm gonna give y'all like two minutes for anything to. I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer. Uh, anything to really jump out at me? Um, uh, they accidentally get teleported to Uberstruck with a small bodyguard. Ah, nope. Can't can't change your priority. Can't change the place where we are. Cheat. Nice try, Hammond. Uh, let's see. So, for scale, it should be the full forces that each character can get access to, as in all of the clans that owe fealty to Clan Pestilence and all of the temple cities emptied out uh, for that are willing to side with Tehenuin. That would I mean, be... We, that would possibly be one-sided. <laughs> that would be a lot of stuff. That would be a lot of scheming. Yeah. Holy uh, moly. As we discussed in um the uh, stream with Scroll, clan pestilence are pretty mighty. So yeah, you have to be careful. There's a reason that they end up winning the war. Um, for all they had their previous defeats. Would be a lot of slon though. <laughs> that would be a lot of slon mage priests. Uh, wow. let's see how easy. Well, yeah, well, that's something you have to consider. Is how easy would it be to get massive amounts of yeah. troops down there? I think um, that's um that's one of the reasons why I was a bit. Now I'm going to try and avoid that for one of my options because it's in the worst part of the world to gain access to, but the need they must get there is high. So exactly how do they get there and what can they get there? It's not going to be easy to get anything really. So if you can figure out exactly how that matches into what you think would make for a good scale, do drop it down in the comments. Uh, let's. <laughs> Alicia's shadow portal opens up and the Uber is like five come in with a steel chair. Uh only to die immediately, because that's probably what would happen to them in that particular conflict. Uh let's see. Um that's a very specific answer of 500 lizardmen with a mounted to Hinwin versus 2000 Skaven specifically. Very specific. Um, and, and and who would mount to Hinwin anyway? Andy, have you not been on the internet? Are you not aware of Scalies? <laughs> <laughs> there is a surprisingly, upsettingly large community. <laughs> I can't hear! <laughs> no, no, no! Alright, so, um, I think... Uh, mm, I, I think we're going to kind of uh, <laughs> what percentage of the Skaven army betrays the other half of the army? That's a fair, fair question. Fair question. Although, again, we are dealing with clan pestilence who are fanatically loyal in a way that most of the other clans aren't, which is super fun. Uh, both trying to ambush the Blue Scribes Battle of Teutoburg Forest style. Well, that would unfortunately fall under the type of battle, once again. Yeah. Uh, so that would require Agreed. changing a uh, earlier section. Okay. So I think what we're basically going to do is I'm going to, from reading y'all's comments, I think I'm going to basically boil it down to a total war scale army. So talking probably about one to 2,000 lizard men and about four to 6,000 skaven. Yeah, that um, seems about right. So we've got ourselves a total war battle. We've got ourselves a one-on-one -on -one with the blue scribes between. And we've got ourselves an honor guard battle. There are three choices. Thank you very much. Who, however, will win? Yeah, let me get these all typed up. Uh, one I, I, think, one. I think I actually have a preference this time. I normally don't, but this time I think I have a preference. This is quite different to our pub brawl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, honor guard. Ret, 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 oh, we missed out on the XCOM option. Oh, that would have been... <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Damn, I, I mean, wish I'd seen that earlier. I wish that would have come in earlier because that's actually hilarious. That would have yeah. been super fun. That would have been really funny, actually. Uh, <laughs> and then Total War scale battle. I do love XCOM. I mean, you've just suddenly made me want to play XCOM again. Damn it. <laughs> By love, do you mean only in small spurts when the percentage don't totally fuck you on something? <laughs> well, kind of, <laughs> but yeah. Um, that's it's what like, reloading is like for. It's like how people love Blood Bowl. <laughs> you, you know, love I, it, you're like, I, fuck! 
fuck this game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do love Blood Bowl. Um, I, I, I know I love Blood Bowl. Um, the fuck this game is an important component part of the game's success. <laughs> if your blood pressure doesn't go up, are you really playing the game? I mean, yeah, really. quite. <laughs> Um, you play Chaos Gate again? Yeah, I'm not, I need to do a full playthrough of Chaos Gate. It's on my to-do list. But um, all right, uh, polls are like well in a way. Make sure that you consider voting on Twitch because remember that Twitch votes your vote counts for a lot higher on there. And the YouTube polls are super close. Like this one split three ways, very very hard. Ooh, ooh um, exciting. But on Twitch, one of the answers is kind of outpacing the other two. Uh, so right now, Twitch is going to basically get to decide what it is unless more people go vote on Twitch. So you better hop to it. Better hop to it. Twi right now, Twitch has all the power. They have all the power. How exciting. How exciting. Uh, <laughs> so I want oh, to bring up this comment. Of in true Zinch fashion, I voted differently on the different polls. <laughs> As is only right. I, I strongly approve. Make sure to get your votes in quick, quick, quick. You got about another two-ish minutes left. Um, any other any other little housekeeping stuff we need to take care of? Because this is the last little break. Yeah, it's our last little break. And I would just like to say, if you haven't already subscribed to the good old lore master of Sotex channels, really just do Ooh. it click and press like please remember to like the vids it makes such a big difference yeah and leave a comment too that also helps oh yeah uh, so uh one thing that i actually just remembered uh that's pertinent uh so later mm, i was gonna do it tonight because but i think i'm gonna do it i think i'll do it tomorrow morning so tomorrow morning i'm gonna release a new lore video which will be it's the last one before quick uh which is coming along quite nicely uh we actually just finished figuring out what is going to be like the background type thing for the quick video, which is super cool. Um, so what we are looking at for, Oh God, my brain. Uh, what we are looking at for uh, tomorrow's video is the, essentially the constellations or the star signs uh, of Warhammer yeah. fantasy and everything that comes along with those. Uh, and at the end of it, there's even a bonus where um, me and my editor made a free translated calendar so you can figure out which star sign in the Warhammer world you were born under and what that means about you and your destiny. Um, so if you're really into astrology bullshit, it'll be a great one for you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, should be I'm, I'm a great fan of those because I created the um, constellations back in the day, a long time ago, when I was young and my beard was actually longer. But that, <laughs> that makes no sense at all. Um, uh, so yeah, I created those constellations ages ago, um, and they've been reproduced in a few uh, places here or there. And I, I really quite like the star signs and how they um, are reflected in the Warhammer world. And uh, did a couple of articles for them for the High Elves version, for the Dwarf version. Yeah, super fun. Yeah, they are shockingly uh, consistent, which is nice between different editions. Um, so hopefully you all enjoy that, uh, and it should be a good time. Um, so that, and that's, that's the last big thing before Queek. Uh, so hopefully everyone's, uh, looking forward to that. And, uh, uh, for those that are following along in the Queek stuff, um, there will be little teasers coming out very soon, showing off little elements of the video. Uh, cause I know people have been waiting for, I don't know, four Ooh. years, uh, for that video. Four years. Something like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, that should be super fun. Anyway, the vote's over with now. Um, so. Wait, how'd it go? How'd it go? How'd it go? Uh, oh God, it, oh no, come back, vote. Uh, mm, I don't suppose somebody screenshotted it on Twitch, did they? Because I wait, I was talking for too long and the Twitch vote cleared out. <laughs> did anyone catch the percentages? I, 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 I caught oh, thank it. You, uh, thank you, mod. Yeah, one of the mods yep. got it. All right. So, excellent. So, oh, wow. The final, wow, this was wow. super close. So the scale of the battle on YouTube has Total War scale at 36%, Honor Guard Retinue at 35%, and the 1v1 with the Blue Scribes at 27%. However, on Twitch, it's 47% for the Blue Scribes, which puts them at 74, 74. and then 35% 
for the honor guard banner battle, which puts them at 70 and then 18% for the total war, which puts them at 54. So that means the one V one with the blue scribes wins by 3%. I did not expect that. Okay. Well, thank you very much for choosing my one. I am a little bit blown away. Okay. So that wraps up all of our little goodies. Um, uh, uh okay who will um, win yeah oh. uh, the blue scribes win uh, you joke but <laughs> yeah yeah you joke but <sighs> um so oh, jonathan scott i am trying to decipher this message can both sides have the infinite, infinite snake, snake and rat and artifact rat artifacts like what do you mean by infinite <laughs> what, what what is what does this mean in that context um, the Twitch Electoral thing. College strike. <laughs> the Twitch Electoral College, <laughs> because it's not a population vote. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's brilliant. Thanks, Twitch Electoral College. Uh, that's funny. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. That, what's also interesting is I think that's the very first time something that was in last or er, that the polls were exactly inverted, which is interesting. Oh, it's a total war glitch. Okay, okay. Um, so, <laughs> they gerrymandered my damn live stream. How dare they? <laughs> okay, cool. So, uh, the way it goes now is that me and Andy take a, just a second to think about what we want to do. And then... Oh, oh, dear. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, then we I'm both thinking. get we both get five minutes um, to pitch our version of the battle. Um, and then we will do our goofy little... Uh, talk about why each other's ideas are shit. And uh, that is pretty much it. And we our goal is to wrap up before two hours. So uh, when Andy is ready, there's no rush, but when Andy is ready... I'll just go whenever we're going to be making this up as we go along. <laughs> okay, well, you just say start when you're ready to start, and I will start your uh, time. Let, let, let me fake crack my knuckles. Crack, 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 <laughs> crack, crack, crack. Okay, I've now fake cracked my knuckles. I think I might be ready to go. Um, all right. <sighs> Southern Chaos Wastes. Holy crap. Um, one on one with the blue scribes in between. Okay, we good? Because yep. I think we should get going. All righty, are you ready for a fight? Because let's have ourselves a fight. It's fight night. On one side, we have in the green corner. Uh, well, which one takes the green corner? Let's be honest, it could be either side. So, we have ourselves a mighty <laughs> battle down in the southern chaos wastes, and we have you pitched get, are you, are this. You as being, oh yeah, let's just go. Okay, let's um, we are pitching this down in the depths of an ancient, twisted, chaos-riddled library. This is a place where the books themselves are a flight. Others are chained in place, and ghosts and sorcerers and half-broken spirits flit between all areas they however are on the outside all of this is external to the core conflict that we have this is at the end of a very long protracted campaign to get here this is not something that they've just arrived at they haven't just teleported in because seriously not an easy thing to do this is after months of pursuit and getting down to the depths of the scribes themselves who are nearing the end of their mission to collect every single last spell, every last piece and essence of Zinch. And they are down there about to enact a great ritual that will inevitably bring Zinch itself, slamming down to gobble up these demons and reabsorb all of these spells. Obviously, our two heroes have got a different version of how this is going to play out. We've got Tenero, Tenero, can barely get the word out, red crested and angry, zipping down there using his greatest benefit, which in this case is going to be stealth, his smallness, to get in there and then ultimately, hopefully, stab at these demons and reclaim what it says, the golden plat that's down there. He is the only one down there. We don't have stegodons, we don't have anything else. It's a mano a mano match. Equally, Scrock, who will be slopping his way down <clears throat> through the various corridor corridors is going to come in at, let's just make it very stereotypical, the other side. 
we can have them both come in, both filled in their heads with all the prophecies of their gods. Perhaps the very gods of their voices, pardon me, the very gods' voices in their head telling them that they have to do this and now because the alternative is a great awakening of zinch the alternative is absolute horror so both of them are charged for this fight let's just keep this as simple as we can we have ourselves not a three-way battle this is a two-way battle because that's what we've gone for which means that we the blue scribes are not going to be a part of this battle they are not there to fight they are there merely the prize they are fighting over this in an attempt to try and disrupt it before this great ritual or whatever else it is that you decide it might be comes to a culmination. So it's Skrulk against Tehenuin. Let's just keep it nice and simple. They are magically pretty much the same. On one side, we've got ourselves a horrendous stream of corruption which billows forth, of course, Tehenuin being immune to many diseases because empowered by the gods themselves will be shrugging off much of that dispelling spells equally there will be spells getting flung back the all too appropriate spells of beasts just perfectly pitched i don't know perhaps he turns into a big monster <laughs> no it's rubbish we're not even going to discuss that i much prefer him having high magic but not high magic pardon me light magic but he he's throwing off his beastie spells yeah whatever they're pretty much tit for tat here it's just going to come down to who is going to win this fight? And as we've discussed right at the beginning of the screen, Skrulk is not just tougher. He's not just harder. He's not just got more attacks. He's not just got a higher leadership. He's not just better in every way, shape or form. He also has artifacts that are quite literally horrendous. But even on top of that, any living creature that comes close to him withers and melts. And yes, his god will try to protect him against this, given the dire situation. But his god has very little sway here. We are in the chaos wastes. We are far away from Sotek, who has not risen up or is not helping much. And we are far away also from the Horned Rat. This is just simply about who can win in this desperate battle. Skrulk is absolutely rock hard. Frenzied out of his head, swinging that plague sensor bearer, I suppose, because effectively that's what it is, a giant plague sensor bearer that's whacking and with the might of not just the horned rat, but of all the other horrendous corruptions that lie within it, every single time hitting Tehenuin and a 50-50 chance of him dying with each strike, because that's basically what the artifact does. Roll over your toughness, you're dead. He's only toughness three. <laughs> He's rubbish. I'm sorry to say it, but Tehenuin is a bit of a wuss. Bash, bash. It will ultimately be a frenzied slaying of Tehenuin. He will scream to the horned rat, latch on to the scribes, and almost certainly be killed by Zinch. <laughs> <laughs> so my conclusion whoa, whoa. is that Gronk <laughs> kills Tehenuin, gnashes into its guts, he literally withers away just to rise again another day because he is, after all, the once and future prophet. Turns around to try and uh, resolve the <laughs> good old uh, scribes and gets killed by Zeech because that's, <laughs> what, cause that's what, freaking what hilarious. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's freaking hilarious and that makes me laugh. So um, I think it's quite likely that in this situation, um, both characters would die, but for the victory conditions, Skrulk eats Tehenuin because Tehenuin is, for all of his many powers, just a skink. <laughs> Bless his soul. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. That's my option. <laughs> yeah, he just coming out of love. This is what happens when you get a Skaven fan to represent the Skaven. He's still going to kill this dude. He's like, I'm oh yeah, straight. no, we're die, but... <laughs> You can't have Skaven if you're not going to kill him. Um, uh, but, you know, he's scroll <laughs> he'll, he'll crawl away, the mutations reeking through his body. He'll probably survive. But I, I, I think it's a pretty one-sided battle. That's um, super funny. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's time for the good lore master of Sotek to take up the opposite corner. Ding, ding, ding! Round two! Yeah, hold on, I have to psychically recover from the sudden pivot at the end there. <laughs> it got, it got, so it's like, oh, so the poll, we need a blue scribe option. <laughs> uh, that's super funny. Uh, <laughs> Here's all. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Um, yeah, poor, uh, okay, sorry. I need a second. Uh, 
I'm just imagining it's like. Okay, I'll run your timer. I can do it this side, so you don't need to worry about it. Say when you're ready. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just imagine like he's just like yeah, yeah! and he just grabs, and just blows <laughs> up. Ah, oh, oh. I love this stuff. That's um, super funny. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, ready? Three, and... two, one. Ding, ding, ding. All right. So. Uh, as Andy said, with the battle raging outside, the two of them managed to make their way into the arcane library of the Blue Scribes in a decrepit, twisted fortress that may have belonged to some ancient long ago race or perhaps was built by demons themselves in the aftermath of the Cataclysm. Yeah. But nevertheless, as they make their way down to the horrible library where there are all sorts of things slithering the shadow, magic is just ever present. The laws of reality here are weaker than they should be, and it's causing all sorts of notable issues. But these two are able to ground the very reality around them. They are living representatives of their gods, living avatars in a sense. And they're able to survive, despite the fact that more realistically, they probably wouldn't have made it this far. But in any <laughs> event, uh, we have uh, these two enter into the room and spy one another across. And despite the fact that realistically, they know what's at stake. They know that if the Blue Scribe devours these artifacts and truly is able to utilize them for Zinch's benefit, this could genuinely be the end of all things. Yet despite that fact, the hatred that these two have for one another at a deep fundamental sense is too much for them to resist doing the right thing to set aside their differences and fight the mutual enemy. No, fuck that. Bring on the apocalypse so long as I can kill that other guy across the room. So they charge into combat, and as they start unleashing spells, things start to go a little haywire because there's a problem with the Blue Scribes being in the room. Unlike Andy's version of the story and my version, the Blue Scribes do get involved, but the problem with the Blue Scribes is they don't know what they're doing, and neither does anybody else. When they panic, they just start casting spells at random. So we have Tehenowin and Skrulk moving across the room towards one another with genuinely random spells just blasting around the room fireballs someone gets healed someone gets a little buff someone gets a debuff it's just complete and sandy but ultimately doesn't really matter i just like the image of it i wasted like 30 <laughs> seconds on that because i thought it was cool it's so, well worth <laughs> it it's awesome <laughs> we have the ultimate battle finally taking place between these two and it comes down to a very interesting combat scenario because honestly i think when it comes to their sorcery although the uh literate bubonicus would be helpful for Skrulk, it's not really going to make a huge difference when it comes to a magical duel of them trying to block one another sorcery but when it comes down to a combat scenario, things get really, really weird because we have a situation where Skrulk has this powerful flail, but Tehenowin has fought things of this nature before. He's fought against the very first Lord Nurglich and Clan Pestilence when they were at the true initial height of their power. He has resistances against all things that are supposed to take him out on only a toughness basis. It's going to only be in the most extreme scenario that he actually gets insta-killed by the Rod of Corruption. But that doesn't mean Skrulk's a pushover. They're both equally fast. They're both freakishly fast. But what Tehenowin has that's going to help him in this scenario is his blade. Because this purified venom, this venom that's designed to deal with the corrupted spawn of the Great Horned Rat, can actually hoard Skrulk. It doesn't matter that Skrulk's tougher because this blade was designed to deal with him. It was designed to deal with the likes of Skrulk. Meanwhile, he's got serpents floating around his body that are always present with him, magically so, because they're representatives of Sotek's divine will, snapping at Skrulk's heels, biting at his legs, slowing him down, distracting him so he can't fully focus on Tehenowin. And Tehenowin, where Skrulk is a frenzied mess, Tehenowin hates Skaven of Clan Pestilence hates them at such a fundamental level that he is a pure, focused, cold fury. And on the aggression, he gets all these benefits from Sotek that are akin to Frenzy, but with none of the downsides. None of the wild swinging around the room, missing and being easily distracted by various annoyances. And Tehenowin is able to apply that cold, straightforward lizardman logic, that extreme focus that no warm blood can ever hope to achieve, and is able to land just the precise blows every once in a while, making sure to avoid the dangers of Lord Scroll Scepter, because the fumes itself aren't going to hurt Tehenowin. He's completely immune to any kinds of poisonous thing. He's going to need a direct hit 
from the rot of corruption to be at any genuine threat of dying. And each time his blade strikes Skrulk, Skrulk's going to become more envenomed, more poison, is going to slow and slow until finally his diseased, decayed heart gives out <laughs> and he goes <laughs> down. And with that, Daniel turns Sorry. his attention to the blue scribes and goes after uh, to slice them to <laughs> ribbons, assuming the blue scribes don't get lucky and accidentally hit him with a banishment or a uh, burning head or anything else that may accidentally destroy Tehenuin. In which case, 50-50 shot on what happens after that. The end. I'll, I I, I seed my time. <laughs> In my years because I set up a digital timer. Um, so that was marvelous. Um, on one side, we have a version where Skrull, um, in all of his monstrosity, pretty much dominates the fight. And poor old Tehenuin is eaten, his guts torn out by Skaven Fangs. On the other side, we have a fight where all the snakes rise up hairy at the feet, the gabarous, horrendous feet for snakes. I really pity for them. Um, <laughs> as the blade chips away slowly but surely at Skrulk and his stamina falls, the blade sinks in, killing the Skaven before one or the other turns over to the Blue Scribes to either be killed, not killed, or what you prefer. Yeah, what, what spell did the Blue Scribes cast at the end? That does not matter for the sake of this battle. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely doesn't. I, I prefer to think that the Blue Scribes are just going to kill Scroll because that's hilarious. Right, so um, this is the point where I, I laugh at Scroll at, at, at Scrolk's killing of my little servant, serpents and and a blade that can... Deary me. Um, yeah, sure. Um, I, I can see poison really harming the most poisonous. <laughs> hey, Skrull does not have creatures. any immunities to poison. That's <laughs> not something that Clan Pestilence has ever stated so, to have. I, I, if we're running down on just simple rules, then I've got twos to wound you. <laughs> You're so weak. You're so rubbish. I've got a mighty flail. Bong, bong, bong. I don't need poison. I have so many attacks. Um, bluntly, Tehenuin is is a really powerful warrior against normal people. Skrulk eats him for breakfast. And I can't help but laugh at this one because Skrulk will, yes, be frenzied. And yes, also, the little bit that we didn't mention cause terror you may be cold-blooded but your leadership is tiny super tiny um odds on you will fail that approximately a third of the time as well believe it or not to anyone is not immune to psychology he will be running sometimes he is literally petrified shaking in his little skinny scaly boots going oh no look at the big beastie he's here oh no oh i really need to stop it ah! but if we're just running on the, there's no rules that stop me from doing that. The okay. dude's running. <laughs> Chat, y'all need to understand something really quick for a second. This has nothing to do with the <laughs> argument at all. It's just something I have to point out. This is so genuinely hard to do because Andy is so fucking funny. Like it's 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 distressing to try and like. It doesn't matter, especially Here's when when he keeps describing how rock hard the rod of Skrulk <laughs> is. Like it's really hard to do this, but because uh, it's just it's just come I'm on. whipping Crazy. you, lizard boy. Crazy. I'm whipping Crazy. you, lizard boy. Here's the whipping thing that's, uh, you down. <laughs> is the problem at the end of the day is that Danny was just been uh. down this road too many times. There's just no greater expert at killing the Skaven on Clan Pestilence, mm -hmm. plague priests. Pontifexes, Arch Plague Lords, whatever you want to call them, he's seen it and done it a thousand yeah. times. And while and Skrulk he's also he's lost nasty, a thousand times, no, he's won every <laughs> single time that he's no, been he personally hasn't. involved. He, he, he won just the Great War back during Lester. No, 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 that's Old Lord. That's not the new I Lord. I die. The thing we have I, I, now I, is the same. How can you talk while I'm eating your gut? Lestria. He is a mortal snake. He just sheds off that old skin and stays eternally. It's not. Not, it's not good for your liver, Skrull. You need to watch your health. <laughs> it's got too high of a salt content for you. You're, you're told you about it. But at the end of the day, the thing... <laughs> he's standing with so salty. He's just salty about everything. It can't be good for the Steven diet. <laughs> I can see it now. His Scroll. liver just gives out. Scroll, that saltiness! No, no! Stop eating! <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, there's a part of I'm sorry, I'm keeping your, there's a part of me that was like, oh, I wonder if we should time the segments at the end, but like, no, we can't because there's too much stupid shit. <laughs> but here's here's the thing. As far as uh, as far as I'm concerned, the thing is that Tenenwin just it's just it's just a difference of experience. Tenenwin, even in the most extreme circumstances of saying Skrulk has been alive for like a thousand years or two thousand years, uh, Tenenwin is just so much older. Like he's been around. This is the original Tenenwin. This isn't the little guy from Sixth Edition who just wandered off into the forest and supposedly gets reincarnated. Mm -hmm. No, this is modern Tenenwin. It's the same <laughs> skink who did all those things. 26 2700 years ago and he has been fighting the good fight against the skaven ever since he in more recent times destroyed the skaven city of fester spike because he was teleported there by the salon he knows his business he has serpents who from a lore standpoint are stated to have venom so potent it chased the entirety of clan <laughs> pestilence out of lustria flooded the tunnels and just made it where despite their disease and there's, uh, <clears throat> you would think their resistances. The, the weird thing about Clan Pestilence, and granted, could this be a writing issue? Sure, but the point is, it's in the lore, <laughs> is that they don't really have any good immunities to poisons. <clears throat> They're resistant to diseases, but Clan Eshin's fairly good at dealing uh, with Clan Pestilence. That's how the first Skaven Civil War ended, was Clan Eshin assassins using poisons and stealth mm. and speed to murder all of wow. the big boys of Pestilence. Your best option and is, that is I what can poison you a bit. <laughs> yes, that is it's literally what Tannenwin does. What do you want me to do, Andy? <laughs> it's, it's a literal, it's uh, like a I have a counter-argument to that. <clears throat> My counter-argument is this. Tannenwin Tastes a bit like chicken. That's it. That He's is my alligator. kind of. He's um, not um, alligator. Um, 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 the, end, um, the thing it boils down to is, I will not deny that the rod of corruption is spooky. But the thing about it I, is, let's be honest, the rod's not even the biggest concern. It's Skrulk himself. You get close to Skrulk and you wither. <laughs> I just Tanuin can um, handle that. Tanuin, no, if he was he, able to deal with the likes of this is the not just simple. Nerdlage, this, well, can deal this with is that. not simple disease. Um, he is next level mincing you. But as I say, I'm willing to concede that we just push aside these bits and we just go stat on stat because. No, frankly, no, no. We never. We never dead. I am not on team tabletop <laughs> because if we're no, no, team no, tabletop, tabletop, that's team everything. We're just going with <laughs> what he's described as. You get close to him, you die. Your best option is not to attack him. Your best option is to stay away, but you chose to attack. You chose the most Tehenuin ridiculous is option. By the god who looks at the Skaven and goes, I'm going to eat that motherfucker. That is what they do. That's what he's designed to do. The Red Crest is... Okay, hold on. I have to pull out this comment because it's going to bother me if I don't. Okay, it's literally yes, the point of the segment! Yep. <laughs> yes, it's just so we've got segment. this. We are supposed to be talking over each other in this section. We are going to do it every single week when we reach the end, because that's what we do. <laughs> it's okay if you don't like that part, but we, we, we're <laughs> totally nice. Fine. You're nice the other 90% of the show. This is supposed to be the stupid part, okay? We acknowledge that. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I'll, I'll pull up that comment later, actually. Uh, but uh, yeah, at, at the end of the day, that's just the issue is Skrulk, who has, sure, the backing of a god and he's a magic stuff. He's going up against an individual whose god has designed him to deal with this very threat. The Skaven of Clan Pestilence, it is the worst case scenario for them to go up against a red crested skank. If Skrulk was fighting anybody else, I would agree that they would probably be completely fucked. Just, they just are. Just because he's just that fucking scary, that fucking nasty. But he's going up against a creature that was designed by gods to deal with this specific And he threat. doesn't have all of his support. The dude is dead. This is not... If he wants to win, he needs to melt into the jungle and come back later. That's how he wins. The reason that he was so good is because he knows how to take out Clan Pestilence. And you do not take on Skrulk one on one in the chaos waste in the middle of nowhere because you will die that's just what's going to happen and he has in his desperate need to get hold of this golden plaque chosen his very first and worst choice and that is to try and take him on one on one he's doomed 
He's going to have to be brought back again. He's going to have to be rebirthed in a spawning pool somewhere over in Lustria because Skrolk will eat him for breakfast. He is just so much harder. And it doesn't really matter about disease or what they can do. Just basic toughness. It's a little bit like saying, hey, why don't we pitch a rat ogre against the baby? And then saying, but the baby will win. No, if the he's baby a skink. has potent enough venom, he's sure. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a skink and not. Uh, yeah, sure, he's a he's a big he's the skink. toughest skink there is. Show some <laughs> respect. He's the toughest baby there is. <laughs> uh, all right, time for closing comments. Uh, Andy? Uh, um, you can go first. My closing comments are: um, I freaking love this shit. It's a really stupid <laughs> show, but I love this show so much. Um, and yes, we are going to talk over each other each week. So if you don't like that part, I suggest just pulling your earphones <laughs> away from your ears because we will. It's perhaps... not that long of a segment. It's okay. It doesn't last that long. Um, <laughs> Dad, dads are fighting. <laughs> dads are my, fighting. <laughs> uh, I, I think having uh, had our nice little uh, back and forth, that uh, my original statement stands, and that is that this is the wrong battle. This is not the right choice. This is a little bit like Malekith's battle. It wasn't the right battle for Malekith. Malekith is much harder than good old Setra, but Setra had the day because it was the right battle for him. And right here, we've got a battle that's designed for Skrulk. He pretty much eats to Hennowin for breakfast. And I'm using that as not just a metaphor, but pretty much the outcome of the battle. And I really love everything that was added regarding the magic and the swirls and how odd it is and spells flying all over the place. Cool as shit. But ultimately, it's going to go Skrulk's way, followed up by almost certainly Skrulk getting the smack laid down upon him from above with good old Zeech. Um, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Axon, you're all good, dude. I was we're poking fun at it, but you're not we're not you're not in trouble. Um no, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't wanting to pull you out in particular. I, I want to call it because there was actually a couple of comments um on the last video which said, Don't do this. Will you stop please talking over each other? Um and no, we are going to talk over each other because <laughs> that's what this section is. Yeah, yeah, and it's just the end section. Yeah, um, it is the end section. Oh, the audio was just cutting out. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that's that's a fair counterpoint. <laughs> yep, it is. We okay. Well, you know what? I'll do a watch back later, and I'll do some little research into that. Um, and if we need to do some amendments to our uh, bullshitting over each other, we that's will. funny. That's funny. Yeah, it is fair counterpoint. <laughs> uh, so uh, my closing arguments will very, very simply be that this is just to Hinnewin, although it's you know a different, a difficult uphill version. This is his Saturday morning <laughs> walk. This is what he does: is kill. Clan Pestilence Skaven. He has to get close to them. He sacrifices them by literally dragging them up in front of him and tearing out their hearts with his dagger. He's used to being around horrific amounts of disease and contagion. Goes into places no other lizardman would dare because there's so much corruption present. But he's fucking Tehenuin. And although his tabletop stat might not reflect it with that toughness three, when it comes to fucking resisting, Tehenuin. when it comes fucking to resisting dead. disease and poison, he is. <laughs> the goat uh, um and with that said this was very fun this was probably the hardest one as far as keeping a straight face for some reason i'm not sure why <laughs> i blame andy but uh, uh sorry <laughs> at the end of the day we all know that in in reality the blue scars would probably win by accident uh <laughs> mm, that's pretty much exactly what i think the conclusion should be one way or another but you might disagree and that's where you now get to come in there is going to be a oh it's going to be over in my channel isn't yeah, it your channel. i better go set that up right now holy <laughs> crap i haven't set good. this up oh this whole day has just been slightly behind schedule so i'm going to go set this up right now over on uh the law hammering youtube uh channel let me just yeah. oh and that reminds me because i forgot to do that until just now uh so after the stream i'm also gonna put up the lore beards vote um now oh, that i think beards vote. nice yeah because i yeah. forgot to put it out so uh for the the vote for next week's lore beards is gonna be up uh which just as a quick little heads up for y'all uh the lore beards vote is gonna be Durthu, eldest of the ancients, so mm. the oldest living tree man, which will have a, which will be a tragic fucking story. If you want to vote for tra team tragedy, um, yeah. we're also going to cover uh, the uh, second option is the inevitable city. So if you're fans of Warhammer Online: Age of Reckoning, uh, you may be extremely excited to hear that because that was the capital hub for the destruction slash chaos team. 
Uh, and that will also cover a lot of things with Zinch, the nature of the realm of chaos, uh, and the fact that there is a literal city within the realm of chaos and how that works and what's going mm. on there. The inevitable city is actually a deeply important place um, that a lot of people don't know about. And then the last option, because we want to make this vote incredibly fucking hard for you guys, is vampires. So we're going to talk about what are vampires? How do they work? What's the general laws of their species? What are their strengths and weaknesses? What's the big differences between the seven bloodlines? Uh, talk a little bit about their founders. Uh, oh, Lichlord, you may be correct, but we'll do that for the next one. And the reason we're going to do that for the next one is because I'm going to write a note. Um, uh, I just put a note down on my PC, so I won't mix that for next time. But that'll be on the next one. So uh, those are going to be the votes. Um, we hope it'll be spicy and difficult for y'all to decide. Yeah, I hope so too. I mean, it's a really nice mix of different subjects. Yeah, and then real quick, I'm going to get us caught up on Super Chat and stuff. Uh, from the Lustria book, the Arcs of Sotek slash Pestilence. I don't know what this is. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, from Jonathan Scott. So could they... <laughs> So what, just have, like, a bunch of arcs of Sotek versus a bunch of cauldrons of a thousand poxes? That sounds like a bad time for everybody involved. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Um, plus, Sotek says to hit anyone has weak little arms. Shut up, you. <laughs> Quiet, you. <laughs> um, I'll uh, hit you with my sword. I'll hit you with my not, sword. He's not a six edition Carnosaur, okay? He doesn't have the little, <laughs> have the baby arms. Uh, I was so happy when the Carnosaurs got redone. If you've never seen the old metal Carnosaur, you should go look up their minis. They had the saddest, the saddest baby T-Rex arms. So true. Uh, Hobby Squire, plague is the greatest gift you can give. All right, thanks, Papa Nurgle. Uh, T-Ball 31, the one who created a god versus the one who tours their eyes out upon seeing a prophet. Skrook is simply outlawed. <laughs> Sorry, pardon me, I shouldn't laugh. Uh, see before in uh, chat doesn't like when our papas fight. Yep. Uh, Hammond. So the lizardmen are Mexican. Is this, is this a Juan on Juan? They're not ah! they're Mexican. Um, the, you know, interestingly, not a lot of people joke, obviously, but uh, a lot of people don't realize that the lizardmen are actually more heavily inspired from Nahuatl's, uh, uh, concepts as opposed to strictly Aztec or, um, mm. Mayan, which is, are we really, ready? Really interesting. Uh, almost. Uh, Jack Flanagan, hate Sotek thing with the 1313, most glorious number. <laughs> I like Durthu's main servant. Just, just said nothing. Just two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! And then he came no, back. I mean, he came back with Durthu. <laughs> Durthu's man servant. I love the idea of Durthu having a man servant, even though Durthu. Well, if we get to talk about him, it's a lot of people look at Durthu and they get caught up on the total war, like oh, Tree Hitler, because he acts like Tree Hitler in Total War. Uh, but like, uh, he is a sad, sad, sad fucking story. Um, True that. I would love to talk about it because it's depressing and I love depressing shit. Anyway. Uh, okay. Andy, whenever you're ready. Are you all ready? Who would win? The choice after all is said and done is yours. Will it be Fehenuin or will it be Skrulk? The only way we can decide is by you right now going over to my community channel over on Law Hammering and choosing one or the other. I'm about to press the post. And once I do, the vote is live. Remember, if you've got an opinion as to why one side should win over the other, please write it into the comments. And we will be watching every single last one of those comments and picking out one of them for next week. That being the question, are we ready? Yes. Then... Uh, I, I pressed. I pressed it to go live. It's live! <laughs> Excellent. That took a couple of extra it's, moments. It's live. Wait, hold on, it's not live yet. <laughs> the vote is live. Okay, so we got Teddy and the Prophet of Sotek and Lord Scroll, the disease who walks. You can go Chad, vote right now. Chad has requested. What is Andy drinking? I am drinking limeade because Drink it up. felt it felt suitably green and poxy. And who doesn't want to have a green and poxy juice when you're discussing green poxy juice mm, when you're discussing Lord <laughs> Uh Communism Incorporated, unrelated, but I'm curious if either of you think Nagash will get access to Tomb King constructs in Total War Warhammer 3. So I would guess that the way they're going to do Nagash, it probably will be as like you'll have to earn it. 
but my guess would be he's probably going to essentially be the undead legions, which means he'll have access to basically all the undead units. But he'll probably have to jump through a lot of hoops to get it. Like, you won't start your campaign with access to all of them. It'll probably be you'll get really simple undead, and then as you build up through the campaign, uh, you get access to the more unique and elite units from the various rosters. So like, oh, you want to get Tomb King Constructs? You're going to have to go defeat Cetra or do some other shit. Or you want to get like Blood Knights? Oh, you're going to have to go do some stuff in Sylvania or whatever. I'm hoping that's what they do. Uh, that seems fair. I mean, particularly when you consider exactly what he can and can't control. But the Constructs, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, so it, it'll be interesting. Because I think, I think what most people are expecting from Nagash is kind of his end times army list, which was basically just everything undead. Yeah. Um, minus special characters. Um, but hopefully they make it hard. Uh, cause I think that would be, that would make it a very interesting storyline. Um, cause then you're having to like make yourself more powerful. Anywho, uh, that's us done almost exactly at two hours, which is perfect. So, uh, we are going to go figure out another matchup for next week. Just a reminder, it will we be are. on Andy's channel as will Lorebeards. Um, so <laughs> both of those, uh, will be on, uh, Lawhammer, uh, this upcoming week. And uh, we hope you all have a lovely evening, morning, or afternoon, wherever you may be in the world. And that's us done. All I can say to end off is please do vote. The votes make all the difference. And please do leave comments over there. And if you happen to be watching this video later, whether it's a week later, a year later, or 10 years later, do leave a little comment. It makes all the difference. Just to say, hey, I'm here 10 years later. That would be a weird one to catch up on at a later date. Beyond that, thank you very much. It's been an absolute joy to watch to henuin go down <laughs> the amount of innuendos you have made this stream andy is record high <laughs> record high uh and uh for those curious the lore beards poll will be on my channel here in just a few minutes um so uh thank you all we'll see you next time Bye bye